that. And in that first fitting, because I remember standing there as an actor, right? Yes. The first fitting, and it's a whole lot. Yes. Yes. How much is the designer? Uh, how much is it the designer's reworking of it, or how much of it is you, the cutter's reworking of the idea? Um, well, it's a collaboration. You know, the designer will say, "I," uh, especially an experienced one, will say, um, "Don't you think that seam should go over a little further than you've got it?" And um, you know, you have to look critically and say, "Yes, I think you're right." And um, you give yourself a new new pin line, that that sort of thing. It's a complete collaboration of, of designer and, and cutter. We work very closely together. Then how many stages are there after that? After that first fitting? Well, it's taking then going back to the to the the uh, sewing room and um, doing any corrections that you've made at the fitting. If you have new new pin lines, or you you put a thread line in for the for the sewer. And then you, you, you pass it over to the sewer and show her what, what you want. And she, um, she does, the, you know, does the seams and, and uh, finishes, finishes seams. And um, then the next, um, the next you get, and you get it ready for the next fitting. Now, this, this all varies so much. Um, sometimes it's, we have the luxury here of having two or three fittings sometimes four. Um, this is often not the case. And in fact, I learned to do costumes in one fitting when I did costumes for Maggie Smith, because she, she didn't like to be in the fitting room. She didn't like to look at herself in the mirror. She and didn't like to look at herself in the mirror. No, no. And um, I had to, the first costume I did for her, I was really I didn't have anything to go on. Once you've fitted somebody, you have a, a basic knowledge of what you need. So I, I got a, from that first fitting, I had, a, um, I had a pattern for her. So after that, I was able to go a lot further in my right. costumes. But um, sometimes they're, they're complicated. You know, complicated things that you so have So how to do you do, deal with the actor's ego in the fitting room? Ego for good or ego for bad? I mean, we're uh, the, uh, from the actress' point yes. of view, you're feeling fairly yes. vulnerable standing yes. looking at this yes, mirror. Of course, of course you're not. a little bit into rehearsal. You yes. don't really know what you're doing yet with the character. <laughs> yes. and this fabric is being put on. People are deciding for you. Yes. How do you deal with that animal, as it were? Well, um, you need to involve the actors, certainly, um, if they're feeling very uncomfortable or. Um, there often needs to be an explanation, which usually comes from the designer, of why, why she has designed this or why he has designed it this way. And often they've already had a chance to discuss the costume with the actor before you get into the fitting room. Um, but it, it, it's, you know, I often feel for the actor because it's, it's not easy to be standing there and having people putting pins in you and, <laughs> and you not knowing where they're going. I, I often feel it's... Um, and is there a skill to addressing a, an actor's, uh, I won't, don't say yes, neurosis, but yes, vulnerability? No, there is, there is. You try to make them, you try to make them feel comfortable. But it's something, uh, it's, it's something you, um, you gain experience at doing, actually. It's, um, and it's how would you deal with a very difficult actor who's not liking anything that he or she, she has seen on his body? Well, that's difficult. It's difficult. You have to try and explain why you've why you've done it, and um, what you have, and um, try and reassure them that it will be all right. Often they don't understand what you're doing uh, in the early stages. They can't see um, what the final outcome will be. So you have to um, you have to reassure them that uh, it's going to be all right. We're we're used to doing this. So Cynthia, these are three costumes that you cut of Maggie Smith. That's right. And this is? This was The Way of the World. Which is 1760? Um, yes. Somewhere um, in there? Yes. And this is the country what? No, this is As that You Like It. That was As You Like It. That was designed by Robin Fraser Pay. And, and she what was, period she is that? Awesome. Um, that was more or less 18th century as well. Maggie there is, is in boys' clothing when she's, um, was it Ganymede? 
and um, the, the center one was um, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. And she plays Titania? Titania, yes. And that was, that was a Susan Benson design. So for this dress here, you had one fitting? Um, that was the very first one I did for Maggie, so I had to have more than that to, to discover what I had to do for her. And that's, um, that's when I discovered that she, she was not happy in the fitting room. And so I'm, what you do, look at the floor, close her eyes? Well, I simply had her turn her back to the mirrors. Oh. I said, you know, I'm, I'm sorry if this is difficult because I was feeling my way here. And um, slightly intimidating when you, you know, suddenly have to do somebody as, as important and as famous as that. It's, um, it's not easy, but I, I was always fairly good with dealing with that. And I said, well, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna ha I need some information, because I knew I was going to have to do a number of things for her. And um, I said, you know, if you can just bear with me, um, I'm going to need, you know, I need a basic. And I did a basic bodice for her, not, not in the fabric. I'd do a, a muslin bodice to see where, you know, what I had to do to make it fit. And um, I had her measurements for her, for her waist and her, her waist of ground and that sort of thing. So the skirt was, oh, we, I just simply did it, um, you know, I was facing the mirror and she was facing me. And um, the, other, the other fittings were easier because, uh, say, I got used to doing, doing the things with one fitting. <laughs> but it was, it was tricky. But she didn't like her looks. Um, oh no. Hard to, hard to uh, understand. Was the more beautiful woman in the world. Yeah. She, did, she didn't like to look at herself. So and this is a draped fitting? The um, that is actually, uh, it has a bone bodice, which you can't really see because she's, uh, she's in profile there. But it, um, it, uh, that was an Elizabethan period that Susan had done for that Midsummer Night's Dream. Susan Benson. Susan Benson, yes. Um, it was a very beautiful dress. And uh, the, um, we had, um, uh, we had an electrician standing, standing over to the, to the left holding those, those uh, pieces of, I think they were organza, holding them out, which is why they're, uh, it looks as though the wind is blowing them, but we had an electrician standing over here holding those. But that was, that was a very beautiful dress. And how, describe that fitting for that costume, if you would. Was, uh, Susan Benson would be in the room with Maggie Smith. Yes. Well, uh, again, it was a bone bodice, not too different from the one that I had done on a, sli a different period, but, but I could still use that pattern, that, that uh, bodice pattern. Um, and um, everything else you can do pretty well before you get into the fitting room, the, the big full sleeves. Um, the skirts, um, skirts are the easiest because they're simply, as long as you know what shape you're, you're cutting them, you don't need much of a fitting as long as it fits around the waist and it's the right length. So how long would the fitting take? Well, we usually book an hour for a fitting. Um, sometimes final fittings can be quite brief, just to check that everything looks okay, but usually book an hour an hour for fitting it. It doesn't always take that long, but you need to uh, book that length of time. And then the third one here, she's playing Ganymede, so she's playing a boy. Yeah, she, she's playing a boy, yes. Yeah. And the so designer for that was? Robin Fraser Pay. <coughs> and uh, yeah, she had um, trousers, um, fairly slim trousers, and a little jacket, and waistcoat, and shirt. So how do you cut a costume of a boy for a woman's body? Well, um, you, you usually put uh, something fairly tight um, around the, the bosom uh, to make them as flat as possible. <clears throat> and other than that, um, it's not awfully different, really. I mean, trousers, um, trousers you cut differently. The, the shape um, through the crotch is a different, different shape, of course. And, uh, but you know, you know, once you have some trouser patterns for women, slacks patterns, you know, you know what to do. You know how to do that. It's not, not terribly difficult. So in the end, what would have been your relationship with Maggie Smith? Would she 
look forward to seeing. Yes, we we got along just fine. Yes. And, and you knew uh, her for how many years? <clears throat> well, she was here for three seasons, um, 76, 77, and, and um, 80. Um, I think I'm correct in saying that, 76, 77. And did she sign this? And, um, or is there no, this was done in 1998 when I retired. She, oh, wasn't, I she wasn't around. Right. But pretty well everybody we came came by signed that, so that was that was great. That's a great treasure. I love. And do you can gain any insights on um, the fact that a beautiful woman can't stand looking at herself in the mirror? Um, no, I I don't I don't know. It's it, we didn't have that sort of relationship that I could ask her about that. It was just something I had to accept. That, um, that she felt it um, a lot of a lot of actors are, are basically insecure and it may have come from that I don't I don't know because I don't look like looking at myself in the mirror no I'm no, standing I'm, there and I'm fitting sure, I'm I, sure I, it's I, difficult I don't for, know what it is for a lot so you must have seen some strange things in fitting rooms yes. behaviors as it were yes most of them most people are very good are very good at fittings, even though they may not enjoy them. Especially here, where we do a lot of period, right. period things. This isn't true of all theaters, of course. You often don't get very much period work in, in the regional theaters. And how do you deal with an actor's vanity? Um, where an actress says, well, you know, I don't like this costume because I don't think it's looking, making me look very good up here, or, yes. you know, I want my waist smaller, or... Well, you have to pay attention to that. Um, you say, well, um, you know, I, um, we, we're, and often the designer deals with that because it's it's uh, it's it's a design question often rather than a than a cutter's question. They, one of the things that that if they, um, the advantage one has um, when you're experienced is that they trust your trust your judgment, and um, that's something that um, that you gain as you as you have experience. When you first start out as a cutter, it's very difficult, um, and it's um, you know when you don't you don't have the experience or the the skill to make people feel uh, feel at ease in their costumes. But that that can be a problem. I um, I can't think of any um, real hideous problems that I ever had with anybody. Nobody stormed out. No. Nobody said, I'm not wearing that. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't remember uh, any of that. And I find that, I found that um, experienced actors were usually very generous and um, respected my, my knowledge and the designer's knowledge as well. I, I always found the most difficult people to, to dress where where actors straight out of acting school, they had a preconceived idea of what they what they were, and they often had to be, you know, saying now just we know we know what we're doing here. If you can just bear with us, we'll we'll make you look as good as we can. And um, that that was often hard for some of them to take when they're first when they first come here, especially.